Hello people! In this tutorial we want to learn how we can create an advanced animated cursor with the help of GSAP library. For the first part, we will cover how you achieve an effect like this. But this tutorial has a second part for a cool effect with a custom cursor which reveals another div block. I explain the code then we get into Webflow and recreate the cursor. Before we check how this works in Webflow, let's learn the code structure. We have a section which contains two images. Also, we have a menu button here too. The section has four divs as child. Two divs are images and two divs are invisible blocks which I use to set the space. Between the images, the divs I use to set the space have no background, so they are not visible. If you want to have a design system or make it easier for other developers to read your code, always use divs to set space between different elements. Let's check the CSS section. The main section with is set to 100. The unit I used here makes the section fill 100% of the browser width. We also set the background color to white. Beside that, we defined how the section aligns the child elements. Finally, I set padding for the top and bottom of the section. The attributes of the images are simple. I set the width and height of the images and also how the background image fills the div blocks for the divs I use to set space. I set the height and width of them. Considering the space, blocks only need height. We can even set their width to zero. We only need to set their height but leaving their width to zero doesn't change anything here. I also added a fake menu button, which changes the cursor behavior on hover. This button is a div block and it contains a text element. The menu button is fixed and nothing happens to its position when we scroll. So we set the position of the menu button to fixed. We set the attributes of the menu button with CSS. The position is fixed. We also set AZ index to tell browser how close the element is to the screen. Aside that we need to set the width and height of the menu button. The other attributes set the position of the menu button and also how it aligns the label of menu. Now we want to set a custom cursor for our design. We add two div blocks. One of them is the custom cursor and the other one is its border. We want to animate them on hover. So, we use two different div blocks. We add the class name we defined for the custom cursor. The first attribute we want to define is position and we set that to fixed. The reason is the cursor moves along the scroll bar and scrolling is not affecting the position of the custom cursor. Also we set the Z index to 99. The width and height of the custom cursor would be 20 pixels. We want to make the custom cursor round, so we set the border radius to 
To set the background color, we add a background color attribute and set it to red for now. As you can see the cursor is not visible, we need to add some attributes. Top and left will set the distance between the cursor and the left and top sides of the window. The first cursor is defined. We want to set the attributes of the cursor border. We use the position and Z index of the cursor. We set the width and height of the cursor border to 24 pixels as we want the border be bigger than the cursor. The div block we use as the cursor border does not have any background color but it has a border so we define the border color and border size. Again, we define the top and left attributes for the cursor border. Finally, we define the border radius to make the cursor border round. As you can see the cursor and the cursor border both are in red. But we want to change their color to black if we hover over a white element and vice versa. We set the background color of the cursor to black and the color of the cursor border to black too. Aside that, we add a mix blend mode attribute and set that to difference. Nothing much is visible now but let's add the GSAP and finalize the effect. There is a small problem. If you want to revert the color of the cursor and cursor border to white on dark background and vice versa, you need set the background color of the cursor to white and also, the border color of the cursor border must be set to white. As you can see, the cursor is black on white background, also it becomes white on dark background. For this part we use a library which is called GSAP which belongs to Greensock. If you want to take your animations to the next level, get ready to replace this with the default animations of Webflow. To make the animation works, we need to import two libraries. One of them is the jQuery and the other one is GSAP as I said earlier. I copy and paste a code which I wrote earlier. So, I explain how this code works and how you can implement that. The first line will set the initial state of the cursor. Y% and X% will define the initial position of the cursor. Also, the scale will define the initial state of the cursor and we set that to 1. GSAP set. In the second line will define the initial state of the cursor border. It has the same attributes but we define that for the border of our custom cursor. Let's tell our custom code 
to assign the current position of the normal cursor to the circle we have created earlier as we want. This custom cursor becomes our cursor. For now we have to define the variables. As we want to deal with these variables instead of the cursor and cursor border elements directly, this line will transfer the all attributes of the cursor element to a variable which is called cursor. We do the same for the cursor border. What we want to do is changing the variables and transfer these changes to the cursor and cursor border elements. We have some extra lines here which we don't need for now. I will make them a comment, so they won't be ran by the Kadepan. Let's see how we can tell our code to assign the position of the main cursor to our custom element. We want to assign the current position of the main cursor to our custom solution. To do that we use window at event listener. We tell our browser when the cursor moves inside the viewport. Use gsap2 to assign the x and y position of the cursor to our custom cursor and cursor border elements. The numbers we have used will define how quick the custom elements catch the cursor. In other way, it defines the delay. Now let's learn how we can animate the cursor on our events. Like make the dot smaller and make the border bigger when we hover over a link or a button. To do this we need to define two different states. One when we hover over the links or the buttons. Second for the normal state. We define a new variable. Let's call it hover. The effects we set here will be applied to all elements with this class name, hover style. By the way, the hover style class name is a combo class. So we can add this class name to our desired elements, no matter if they already have a different class name. The first event listener we see here will define the changes to the custom cursor. When the mouse is over an element with hover style class name, we tell our browser to scale down the dot to 0.5 and scale up the border to 2. Also, we have another event for mouse out, which we revert back the scale of our dot and border to 1. I add the hover style combo class to the menu button and publish the changes, so we can see the final effect. After that, I copy and paste the code inside Webflow custom code and we see how this code works in Webflow. We told our code to scale down the cursor if hover over an element with this class name, so we add this combo class to our button. Let's publish the changes and see the result.
It seems we have some problems. The cursor hover effect doesn't work or it is not stable. Sometimes it works and sometimes it does not. Do you have any guess? The reason this happens is when we hover over the menu button. The circle or the dot will catch the main cursor. Since the Z index of the custom cursor is higher than the menu button, we actually did hover over the dot, not the custom menu. This can be fixed easily by adding an attribute to the CSS of our circle and the border. By doing this, we tell our browser to ignore the circle and its border element. As I said, we need to add something to the CSS section. Pointer events none will do the trick and solve our issue. This is before we publish the last change. When we publish the changes, the problem would be solved. Also, we switch to Webflow to create a custom cursor with these codes. I have recreated one of the coolest work I have seen recently. We have a navigation bar, a big header, subtitle and also an image. The layout is pretty simple. We want to put the navigation bar options inside a deep block and make the deep block clickable. So, by doing this, we can bring our cursor effect to life. Let's recreate the dot in its border inside Webflow. I add a deep block and set its height and width. Also, set its position to fixed. We set the left and top values to zero. We do something similar for the cursor border. Just make sure you use the right class names for the cursor and cursor border elements.
we copy and paste our code inside Webflow. Don't forget we need to import two libraries. One of them is the jQuery and the other one is our main library for this effect, GSAP. You can get the code for free on Patreon. Also for the links, we need to add a combo class. Hover style is the combo class. We need to trigger the animation of our cursor when we move the cursor over the links. Also we need to set the blending mode of our custom cursor to difference. We do this to make the custom cursor black on white background and make it white on black background. The last step is adding pointer events non to the cursor and cursor border. We do this to make the main cursor ignores our custom cursor when we move the cursor over the links or the buttons. Let's publish the changes and see the result of our work. Wow. Well done guys. Thanks for watching the first part. Stay tuned for the second part as you are one step away to do something The really code is cool. available on my Patreon. If you need to copy and paste the code, you can visit my Patreon page.